या नहीं आ रही है आ रही आ रही सर अभी आ रही है नहीं आ रही अभी आ रही ओके इको तो नहीं हो रही ज्यादा कुछ इतना नहीं है सर ठीक है और मैं इसका हल ये कि मैं फिर वो लगा लेता हूं लाइव है अभी लाइव है मैं हैंड्स भी लगा लूं जरूरत नहीं है सर शो बिल्कुल सही सर बिल्कुल सही आ रही है आपकी आवाज जबरदस्त सॉरी मैं असल में अभी था आपके से आपने कॉल की थी सर हम स्टार्ट करेंगे कब सर प्लीज स्टार्ट करें सर ऑल लाइव है प्लीज स्टार्ट करें योर लाइव लाइव नाउ ओके अच्छा ओके सो आई कैन नॉट सी द पार्टिसिपेंट्स हियर सो वो फेसबुक पे सर देख रहे हैं देयर ऑन फेसबुक ओके राइट अच्छा आई थॉट यू नो यू आर जस्ट डूइंग समथिंग एट द बैक स्टेज कुछ चेंज अरेंजमेंट कर रहे हैं आप किस तरह का नहीं 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 वेरी गुड So uh, let me share my screen, na, so that at least you would be able to see my slide, right? You want? Who uh, Facebook? Me to aye, ab ab kya miss? Okay, let me share my screen. Let's hold on. आप उसर आ रहा है कुछ सामने जो लिखा हुआ बच्चे जो लिख रहे हैं वेलकम हेलो वेलकम आई कैन नॉट सी एनीथिंग एक्सेप्ट योर विंडो दैट्स इट दैट इज व्हाई आई अ बिट कंफ्यूज के आप इसको थोड़ा सा आपके राइट पे आ रहे होंगे चीजें आपके पास वो स्क्रीन चैट की नहीं आ रही नो आनी तो चाहिए नो कमेंट्स नथिंग तो मैं इसलिए बड़ा वो था कि शायद मैं मैं थेरे सर एक सेकंड अभी मैं आपको कर देता हूँ कैन यू सी माय स्क्रीन बाय द वे हाँ सर हमें तो मुझे तो आप नजर आ रहे हैं नहीं मैं अपनी बात नहीं कर रहा मैं अपने पावर पॉइंट की बात कर रहा हूँ कैन यू सी दैट पावर पॉइंट तो नजर नहीं आ रही हाँ कॉस्ट एफिशिएंट एक नजर आ रही है इसकी मुझे मेरे पास आ रही है सो व्हाट अबाउट दी अदर पीपल जो आपके स्टूडेंट्स हैं जो पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं उनको भी नजर आ रही होगी सर हाँ ओके तो दे कैन सी आल्सो ना यस अच्छा एंड यू टोल्ड मी अबाउट के चैट चैट्स भी हो रहे होंगे लेट्स अबाउट रियल टाइम के कमेंट्स हैं ओह यस हाँ आई सी आई कैन आई कैन सी ऑल दिस कमेंट्स So I can see the comment from Danish Khan, Nasnain, Heather, Walikin Salam Ji, Faraz, and uh, Ali Sheikh, Zohaib. So, how many students are you? Are you online? Ah, uh, sure. Ah, 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 sure. so you guys can see my screen so that's wonderful so fir uh, chalo ji let's start uh, if i move here but the screen aapki move nahi ho rahi aapke screen ke upar to i have to switch to the main screen is it moving there also yes sir aap nazar aa rahe hain aap bhi nazar aa rahe hain aur wo screen bhi nazar aa rahi hai perfect excellent excellent so bismillah ar rahman ar rahim thank you very much uh, abdul fakar sheikh sahab uh for inviting me in today's session and uh, though we discussed about this thing earlier as well uh, i was awarded earlier as well uh, by your good self but somehow it was uh, it could not happen uh, because of some unknown reason 
and i think you told me at the 11th hour that it was cancelled somehow or the other uh but that's fine i think um, but by the way I, I, like on that day i was online on on time and um, with ready with, with ready all my material but somehow you know uh, nobody was there so that was something could not happen by the way uh but anyways let's let's move forward um honestly i'm really glad to be part of it um i do not know much about the by the way the participants or your students a uh, profile when i say profile which means that uh, what they are working um like uh, what kind of experience they have in supply chain and uh, from which industry they belong to so i do not know much about them but by the way so and that is why actually i made my all my slides um primarily based on um, the basic information and the basic data i can get out of this research so before i start my talk um i would like to introduce myself formally um i am anwar nazami and uh, currently i am working as uh, vice president yeah, of research. research so before i start my talk um uh, i would like to there is a eco hello um, and uh, currently i am जुल्फकार साहब कुछ इको आ रहा है नो व्हाइट्स हैपनिंग सर नाउ इट विल बी ऑल राइट सर ओके वेलकम सो अगेन बिफोर आई स्टार्ट माय टॉक आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस माय सेल्फ माय सेल्फ इज अनवर निजामी एंड आई एम करेंटली वर्किंग एज वाइस प्रेसिडेंट सप्लाई चेन इन लाइक हेलमेन वर्ल्ड वाइड लॉजिस्टिक इट्स अ ग्लोबल सीपीएल कंपनी Uh, it's a germany based um, uh, like organization and um, and we have been working here in pakistan for past uh, almost 14 years um so it has been over uh, 17 years in the 3p industry all together uh, dealing with multiple customer and different difficult situation all together um i'm also part of um, uh, supply chain association of pakistan as vice president over there and um, and uh, i also would like to i think if you can know this cap little about little bit by the way so it's the only supply chain body in pakistan uh, who represent the supply chain fraternity you know all together so i would definitely uh, encourage you to um, get yourself enrolled with this body because it will provide you a kind of uh, um, platform whereby you can exchange your uh, knowledge and of course learn a lot make new friend in the industry and of course um, uh, it can ultimately like benefit uh, for all of you to uh, like uh, get to know a lot of people in the supply chain fraternity all together so to to do that by the way you can log into the, our website which is called www.scap.pk whereby you can go get all these information about memberships and of course um, other details related to supply chain uh activities uh, in this cap platform so um before i move on to my slide uh, i would like to give you a quick overview about um the pakistan supply chain situation uh, uh which mainly related to the logistics cost um as it is one of the main cost uh, driver in current situation by the way um if i give you a kind of quick uh, overview uh pakistan has got huge potential um, due to its size and geography and uh, according to the recent uh, world bank uh, um, like report which says that the estimated um uh, the logistics sector in pakistan could capitalize um on untapped potential uh, worth approximately 30.7 billion dollar which is which is of course huge opportunity and huge gap for a lot of us by the way and um, if you look at the statistics of pakistan logistics mix uh, which is around 90% of the cargo are moved through the road freight transportation um along through 500000 trucks by the way registered trucks and um, you know you know it very well that a um, lot of trucks out of this 500000 registered trucks um are actually obsolete trucks um and of course heavy on fuel uh, consumption 
and highly incompetent and of course inefficient in terms of the time and the cost also. So, uh, and most importantly, I think, which is one of the key area right now, um, uh, that these trucks are actually damaging our environment um, and also contributing significantly uh, with regard to the um, carbon footprint all uh, like uh, all together. Um, which means which means that uh, there's an opportunity here, of course, not only for uh, companies like us, like GPL companies in Pakistan. Um, I think you know a lot of them already, um, but also for the end user, like companies like uh, Unilever, companies like any other company who are into just manufacturing business in Pakistan, who actually uses these trucks um, uh, to, to transport their goods from one point to another point uh, in Pakistan. So they have got this huge opportunity for the investment in road freight um, by bringing uh, new vehicles um, on roads. Uh, creating value for customers um, as well as um, uh, like um, also explore opportunity of moving goods via railway as well. Um, I would also like to share a knowledge of uh, another very efficient uh, means of moving goods from downstream to upstream, uh, which is still untapped, uh, though a lot of studies has like have been done over the past um, um, two decades in Pakistan uh, by Planning Commission of Pakistan, by Ministry of Communication, and by other, other like, um, um, like uh, supply chain professional um, in Pakistan. And that is the innovative investment opportunity for companies to invest in 30,000 kilometer long an inland water transport system along the corridor of Indus River from Port Kassim to Noshara upstream, you know. So it is it is something which which needs to be explored also. And you know that the uh, logistics through waterways always be efficient and um, uh, you know like cost effective, like in many ways by the way. And it will also like um, ease or the pressure on the on our highways and the secondary roads uh, all over the country. And of course, will provide an alternative kind of um, uh, like means to transfer your goods from downstream to upstream in much like um, efficiently, of course, cost effectively. This is one of the area where we have to look into it when we talk about the um, uh, cost effectiveness or cost efficiency. We should we should look for we should we have to be innovative at the same time. We have to look for the alternative. You know, means of um, uh, doing business by the way. That would certainly help you to like, um, uh, like uh, uh, do a lot of um, new things by the way when it comes to reducing your cost and increasing your efficiency in supply chain. So, in nutshell, if we talk about the Pakistan logistics market overall, uh, apart from the current business volume. Most importantly, we also need to create awareness and boost up the trend of outsourcing because these organizations who are into this manufacturing business uh, cannot engage their resources and invest heavily on these assets, by the way. So there we have to develop a kind of understanding um, of the core competency concept whereby uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the like uh, work should be done by the expert, not by the uh, like non-expert people somehow. So I think this is one of the area where we have to focus on uh, to increase the awareness of outsourcing all over in the, in the industry, uh, whereby uh, the, the expert people would come up and companies um, should come up and of course enable um, these manufacturing companies to lower down the cost of supply chain and also to increase the efficiency overall. Um, we all know that, that there's a cost pressure also. Um, uh, almost every industry, especially in fast-moving consumer goods in Pakistan, mainly uh, due to declining, declining buying power of the consumer. We all, of course, part of the consumer base in Pakistan. Um, but at the same time, these companies should take these, these outsourcing companies, for example, uh, not as traditional 
traditional vendor, but but as their service partner who actually enabled them them to achieve their supply chain objectives and goals all together. So I think um, it will ultimately like uh, help them to improve the um, the customer services, uh, their product availability all across the supply chain, and uh, of course will impact positive. Um, and in their top line and also in their bottom line. So, um, like, you know, uh, to cover up uh, uh, this this whole this whole uh, the topic, um, I, I I decided to start it from the beginning. You know, and that is of course the um, the evolution of supply chain because it will help you to understand the 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 supply chain evolution altogether and to understand that how this actually this concept evolves. Um, evolved over the period, and uh, and uh, and it will help to understand that what we have done already in the past, and where have, where are we now, and where we have to go in future. So these are three main main uh, like um, uh, topic we will going to cover in few slides um, uh, like um, moving forward. So if I just uh, uh, I started uh, tracing back the the history of. Uh, uh, supply chain um, right from the construction of pyramid, which was happened in 2700 BC, by the way. And you all know that uh, building up such a huge infrastructure uh, in desert um, um, was at that time, it's a, it's a miracle, it's a, it's a mystery, by the way, and it's still unresolved because you know that moving all those stone, of course, it's part of the procurement process, procuring all those stores, making the supply of those those that was material smooth, um, bringing them from different part of the world to this area, particular area, and then of course without these um, heavy machinery, doing a lot of stuff. Of course, of course, all this stuff manually. So it's something I think we we can say that it is it is the beginning of, of a kind of logistics or supply chain concept altogether. So uh, if, if we start facing uh, um, back the history of supply chain uh, from uh, this pyramid uh, time, then of course we move on a little bit uh, no, onward. Uh, in 300 BC, um, there, there was a revolutionary Greek intercontinental trade transport, which was mainly um, uh, through sea route, by the way. Uh, you know that uh, the Persian Empire and the Roman Empire, and of course, um, the the old um, ancient empire used to use this water water passage to transport their production to different part of the world at that time. And of course, they they were using these uh, water channels so efficiently, um, uh, like to, to ease out their logistics uh, uh, matter somehow. Um, and then if you go a little bit onward in the history, and you would find that um, if you talk about Islamic history, then I would say that the construction of Cordoba Mosque in Spain um, was one of the uh, one of the example, very good example of supply chain. Because at that time, the, the Umayyad of what we call Umayyah of that time uh, invited the different state, Islamic state of that time, and like like um, requested them to send um, different kind of material from their location to Spain, uh, the Cordoba, Spain, which is around 200, uh, two hours train ride from Madrid to Cordoba, by the way. So they actually invited all the state of that time to send the uh, material uh, to Cordoba to build that amazing mosque, by the way. And, um, and of course, uh, the Umayyad has started this process of building that mosque. And of course, um, I think uh, they, they, have, they have set up proper procurement logistics uh, of that time. Because they are, at that time, they, they not only imported or brought the, the, the material from different parts of, of the world at that time, but also they moved out plants from uh, from different part of the world to that Cordoba. You can also, if you visit Cordoba even now, you would find some orange tree over there also. And those orange trees actually came from the Egypt, by the way, Damascus at that time. So that is one of the, uh, I think, important uh, event of that time, whereby 
we can we can call it a very good um, uh, procurement logistics um, i think uh, concept has uh, had a board at that time um, if you if you go a little bit further in the history uh, from 15th to 18th century um, ad um, there is a lot of breakthrough happened at that time by the way the, what the most important breakthrough happened uh, during that time was the uh, evolution of the first postal service by the way uh, which actually like um, yeah, like primarily used for the military purposes uh, uh, logistics purposes but actually uh, put stepping stone for the modern express movement the courier do by the way you use uh, right now so this is one of the uh, i think uh, breakthrough happened um, uh, like during the first 15 to 18th century b is ad um if you if you trace back uh, not too far uh, almost uh, a century ago in 1913 um, the 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 uh, the concept of assembly line uh, production assembly line and it was actually like um, um, introduced by henry ford uh, of course in his factory of automotive um, uh, products uh, so yeah so that that actually um, uh, provide basis of uh, of uh, the assembly line concept production facility and i think it's a moving assembly line of course uh, and i think um, it, it it evolved in 1913 i think now you can very well understand that uh, it took around uh, over 100 years to reach to that point where the robotics now um, being used um, uh, uh, for production of these products whether it's automotive or uh, electronic goods or consumer goods and so on so so forth um, uh, in 1950s um, the development of the ocean and shipping and of course the barcoding introduced um, and of course it, it revolutionized the um, um, like uh, the the the, uh, the fast uh, movement of cargo from one country to another country and also from one continent to another continent which later be uh, being like um, transformed into containerized vessel, by the way, uh, which also revolutionized, revolutionized the whole uh, shipping industry um, in the world, and we're still using it, by the way. Um, and if we, if we just trace back in 1960s, uh, you would find a development of uh, um, supply relationship, the awareness of the supply relationship, of course, and the development and uh, of cold storage, cold chain, by the way. Um, at that time, um, in 1970s, um, there's a concept is called Kanban, uh, which is primarily basically a Japanese concept um, for um, uh, for like um, um, the transparency in the production system, uh, the resources available uh, compared to the capacity available of that production facility. By the way, so yeah, I think it is something which is um, introduced by Japanese at that time, and. Um, uh, especially like um, um, like uh, emphasizing on the procurement um, of uh, capacity of material altogether. Um, in 1980s, the concept, the inception of the concept of uh, a supply chain formally emerged in the in the in the global arena, and um, uh, we started talking about the uh, the cross trading, the cross docking concept um, in 1980s. Um, if if we go back and uh, in, in the 90s, um, the concept of TPS, which is actually being adopted by the uh, giant Japanese multinational giant uh, Toyota, uh, and we, uh, that is why it's called TPS, which is called Toyota Production System, and um, so it was actually adopted by them and implemented by them, and later on, all the Americans and, and, and European countries. Uh, adopting that concept in their production facilities all across. So that piece has um, really contributed um, uh, significantly when it comes to the production efficiency and the cost effectiveness in the supply chain altogether. The concept of just in time is one of them, by the way, and it is still being followed right now. Though I think it has evolved significantly, uh, but yes, uh, it's still being followed followed by many, many like um, factories of many companies around the globe. <clears throat> if we just look at the uh, the era of uh, 2000, 
which is actually the emergence of the uh, supply chain economics and the finance and logistics all together and also the warehousing profession uh, whereby these this profession needs to be like um, started being taught uh, like uh, like teach in the universities and different institutes all together excuse me yeah uh, so <clears throat> And we talk about the the latest um, development in the in the recent age, uh, whereby we talk about the e-commerce and the marketplace and uh, resilient <coughs> supply chain, and of course collaborative, responsive supply chain and the cost-efficient supply chain. So these are the concepts which right now is evolving in different part of the world, and we uh, being part of the global village, uh, I think the information is playing. Um, uh, very important role and also like technology, by the way. Uh, so right now we are more technology driven than, than anything else. So in the next slide, like um, I, I, I try to cover up or precisely um, the different uh, uh, philosophy and the key driver and the key performance metrics um, it evolved uh, between 1980 and 19 uh, to, to, to uh, like uh, current current dates. Uh, you can say that. So uh, I like uh, if we talk about the in early 1980s, uh, the philosophy at that time evolved. That is the product-driven kind of philosophy, and they were quite ten uh, like um, uh, like uh, towards the quality, the better quality of the product, uh, which means the lifetime of the product at, at that time was much higher than what we have right now. And the key performance indicator at that time was the inventory turns. And the production cost, you know. So if you if you go back in the history, I don't know. Um, I think Zulfikar must must acknowledge that a uh, lot of products being produced in in early 90s uh, was much uh, is like um, uh, like um, uh, uh, strong and of course um, uh, durable in terms of the quality and, and the quality was was much better than what we have right now, you know. So at that time the philosophy was to uh, mostly on the product driven and of course the quality driven kind of approach uh, like adopted by these manufacturers at that time. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in the late 1980s, you know, the, the concept has changed a little bit. Um, they uh, now know uh, they have become more uh, volume driven philosophy, you know. Because uh, at that time, the economy of scale, uh, the concept of economy of scale came into uh, picture. And uh, they talk about the more, more production to lower down the cost. So the, 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 the emphasis at that time was on the volume and the cost. Of course, throughput means to increase the, uh, like, um, uh, the produced item to push it to the market so that they can produce more in the factories, by the way. So the, the, the philosophy at that time changed a little bit from product to the volume, uh, let us say. If you go a little further in the early 1990s, by the way, um, the, they, they, the, the, the concept of, um, the, the, again, the philosophy changed at that time immediately. Now they have changed from volume to the market driven because at that time the consumer, I think a lot of, lot of you, of course, part of that age, uh, whereby the consumer started, you know, playing role, um, uh, and they started dictating customer, dictating like uh, manufacturers, that, and they started uh, uh, like uh, um, like uh, uh, showing their their interest, their their demand um, of of different products, and of course according to their um, their, their requirement. So. Th the philosophy has changed from volume driven to market driven and the key driver at that time uh, like shifted from cost to product availability <coughs> because the consumer has got awareness at that time which means um, if there is no um, like product and, and choices uh, like had increased at that time because for example um, like um, uh, in, in case of automobile um, they have got this um, Japanese automobile manufacturer at that time, for example, Toyota, Suzuki, uh, you know, and um, like uh, Honda at that time, along with the the old play of the market, for example, um, like Volkswagen, Audi, and um, 
like Volvo and uh, Mustang and all the American and European manufacturers. So the choices had increased at that at that time for the consumer. So consumers started uh, like um, dictating or or like um, showing um, like uh, so that is why uh, like um, um, they their their strength of course and that is why the manufacturers started ensuring that their 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 order fill rate uh, should be optimized and of course their market share should should remain uh, intact so, and and that is why they they started transporting their or making their products available in the market all the time so in those days so if you move a little bit out like in the late 90s the shift like uh, another shift actually came into the picture that is from market driven to customer driven at that time so and the customer talk about the lead time because if i i if i want i want to at that in those days if i wanted one project one product uh, you know and the and the and the manufacturer could not deliver me at my on my time of course then i would switch to uh, to another product immediately so of course the key performance indicator at that time was were the customer satisfaction the value added addition uh, and of course the response time at that time and if we talk about the the the, the prevailing of course um, uh, like age uh, now we talk about the knowledge driven the information the technology um, the real time communication the intelligence i think lot of factors has and have been introduced by influencing uh, these manufacturers and supply chain all together so i would say <coughs> right now it's not about product versus products it's about supply chain versus supply chain because i think we have heard example right now you can you know that i don't i do not know whether anybody is from from agro uh, food when agro food introduced the rice cream uh, many years ago they advertised their ice cream on, on on mainstream media heavily and quite effectively by the way but when consumer um, you know uh, went to buy the 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 the, the um, uh, agro the omo ice cream uh, from from uh, uh, the different pop and uh, pop and pop and mom shop and different small and big big shops in in, in different part of pakistan they could not like uh, get that uh, product available like uh, there by the way so uh, like they had got a kind of setback at that time and whereas the ball had balls at that time being their competitor um, uh, like uh, they made sure that their product should be available there so they have got lot of uh, they had achieved uh, a kind of um, uh, big market share uh, des- uh, like uh, despite the new entrant in the market so you know so so you know this is something i think we, we all should know understand the, um, the 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 mindset the behavior of consumer because it's so much complex uh, they we all be the consumer when we go for let's suppose the the ordering online we every one of us uh, want that product delivered to your doorstep maybe in next one hour for example and that is why amazon um had introduced this this new concept delivering the product in one hour right from ordering online on to the marketplace and till the time consumer get that product physically delivered at the doorstep and it takes only one hour to to, to complete the process you know so the, the consumer demand um, like uh, has increased so much during this time by the way and i think it's the demand the, the 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 consumer behavior is so changing so like uh, influenced by a lot of other like um, things by the way so uh, moving forward if you look at this slide the globalization and uh, lengthening the supply chain i think it's a game changer right now um right from supply chain is all you know that supply chain is all about flow of cash and information and goods from one point to another of course and if you talk about the, uh, the the spending i i would like to give you a kind of uh, overview uh, what's going on right now so in terms of value of course in different segment of 
supply chain. For example, in, in fruit and vegetable supply, uh, trade, which is which is one of my which is one of the uh, I think um, uh, interesting topic and very close to my heart, by the way. And I did a lot of research in Pakistan uh, in the cold chain, um, like um, availability in Pakistan and what are the gaps available right now in cold chain in Pakistan and what kind of uh, uh, like um, uh, problem uh, we are facing right now and how it can be resolved. And I will try to cover a few things in the, com uh, the coming slides, by the way. So if you just look at the, uh, the, the, the like um, uh, spend, logistic spend moving, just handling this food logistic is over 260 billion uh, spent over just in logistics, moving these uh, these this fruit and vegetable from the farm to the fork, you know, from farm to the end consumer. So it's a big market, of course, a big spending, and there are a lot of gaps still available, and we can reduce, we can make it more cost efficient if we just um, focus on on different uh, like um, in this particular segment. By the way, if we just move on to another. Uh, like segment, which is the cocoa trade, by the way. Uh, we all consume chocolates, we all consume coffee, and uh, different byproducts and different other products made of uh, uh, cocoa. So, generally, is um, 25 billion dollars uh, invest, you know, spend a deep year just to move cocoa from the African countries to all over the world, you know. So, it's a big, big spending. Big logistic spending, uh, like in the supply chain, by the way. Talk about the SMP, which is called a skin milk powder, which generally be also a big importer of SMP, despite that we are fifth largest milk producing country in the world. But just because of the inefficient supply chain we have right now, especially cold chain, um, a lot of these milks, um, the milk we produce uh, locally uh, wasted, you know. And, um, and because of uh, because of we do not have any kind of value addition facility available in the country, uh, we could not capitalize this strength and convert that liquid milk into SMP, which is called skim milk powder. So again, um, um, we being the importer of SMP, uh, we also uh, contribute in this 27.7 billion spending uh, last year in just logistics segment. Uh, you know, uh, so yes, the globally connected multi tier supply chain networks connecting multiple sites and geographical locations, of course. And of course, we uh, talk about, um, and of course, when it comes to this, this kind of spending, we talk about um, uh, the companies like us, like third party logistic industry, of course, came into being. They started playing their role, helping those manufacturers to. Uh, fulfill their supply chain need and the concept of 4PL came into being of course in the 5PL also and we'll talk about these in all PL um, sometime in the next class hopefully that what is different between 1PL, 2PL, 3PL, 4PL and 5PL okay? so I'll discuss these all concept maybe next time when um, I'll be invited by Sheikh Saab in the next class inshallah uh, maybe after Ramadan or maybe, I don't know, it's up to him. He's a good friend of mine, whenever he would invite me, I definitely, I cannot say no to him, by the way. So, yeah. So, of course, the, then of course, the concept of um, multi-model transport evolved also, uh, which means that, um, uh, you know, if you just look at the geography of, of the world, you, you would find a lot of um, landlocked country whereby they do not have access to the, 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 the ocean uh, gateway, they do not have a sea with them, which means that like, uh, they have to use another country uh, to, to complete their import process somehow. Uh, you just experienced a recent um, crisis of Suez Canal blockage. You know, I was part of the uh, webinar, international webinar, a uh, couple of weeks ago, in which um, uh, I think different speakers uh, and, and joined in that webinar from Saudi Arabia, from, from UAE, and we discussed this, this Swiss canal blockage, you know, only. And, um, you know, so it, of course, this only Swiss canal 
um, handle around 10% of the global trade, only 10% of global trade. And it, it is one of the one of the sea trade uh, route uh, to connect the Asia with Western world from east to west, by the way. So definitely, uh, so talk about the multi-model transportation, it actually is all this, this pressure on these kind of waterways and they help you to move one cargo by sea to one location and then move by road to another location and then by rail to the ultimate destination. So you actually use multiple, um, um, excuse me, uh, multiple uh, like um, uh, means of transport to move um, like uh, these uh, these goods from one point to another point. So this is called multi-modal transportation. I would I would love to discuss this whole concept uh, in the next session hopefully, and I would I would try to cover up this 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 particular concept in much um, you know uh, like uh, detail. By the way. So, um, so to understand the to, to understand the um, as the situation, what we are doing right now. So we have to map the value chain, uh, and we and while mapping this value chain, you would come to know that uh, that fl those flaws and weak links in the supply chain that converts into the losses of opportunity and losses of resources, and of course. The, the, the production waste and um, the energy, the resources, and so on and so forth. So the value chain losses and the lost opportunity, and the, of course, will transfer into the money end of the day. So if, if I just cover up a few, few things, um, like just for information, 25% um, of the shareholder lost value that can be attributed to a supply chain losses, for example. For example, if 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 a um, um, uh, supplier of KFC failed to provide the chicken um, uh, to the uh, to these uh, outlets across Europe or America, the the share price of the KFC would go down immediately. You know, which means that uh, their share price is too entirely depending upon. The efficient supply chain. It happened, by the way, a few years ago in, in America. By the way, one of the one of the like um, uh, 3PL partner of KFC, um, you know, like uh, broke down. The supply chain broke down, and the the, the supply of chicken uh, could not happen on time to these outlets, uh, these, these stores, uh, like um, restaurant, by the way, and resulting uh, the huge loss to KFC. Not only in terms of the revenue, but also in terms of the share price altogether. So supply chain is that important. By the way. So for Ericsson in the last um, uh, decade, by the way, um, uh, like a couple of decades ago, lost 400 million euros just because of the disruption in the supply chain by their partner plant. Uh, you know, so that 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 shows that the importance of supply chain and the and the value. Supply chain carries in, 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 the, in the in the whole business cycle. By the way, uh, if we talk about uh, the the waste in the food supply chain, so 1.3 billion tons food wasted annually in the food supply chain, which means and it is one third of all the food produced for the consumption globally. So, if you able to save this this uh, like uh, uh, this much of food, um, you know. You can, of course, sell it in the market. Of course, it can bring you a lot of revenue another day, and ultimately, it would subsidize your cost and, of course, like uh, increase your profitability another day. So, it's not about increasing your profit or reducing your cost. It's about increasing the efficiency or reducing the waste. By the way, so this is how you can also like bring in efficiency in supply chain altogether. So if we talk about the uh, water, which is the scarce, uh, what is the scarce material in the world, um, because the, the fresh water is not that much, it's only, I think, five to 6% of total water available globally, by the way. Um, so so the 3% of that five to 6% water, fresh water, um, uh, gone to waste 
just because of our inefficient agricultural practices uh, all across the world by the way so if you able to introduce good agricultural system um you would be able to increase your yield of your farms of course which result into uh, you know more production and then more supplies and then more profitability which ultimately reduce your cost in the day of course this is one of the area talk about the uh, the india and pakistan only which is of course very close and most relevant in india around 30% of the total fruit and vegetable production we, we call it post harvest losses you know so it is around 30% 30% of the total production of the fruit and logistics gone to waste just because of the lack of adequate supply chain or storage facility or packing pack houses across india same way in pakistan um 25% of the uh, we have uh, this post harvest loss around 25% which means we waste 3.4 million tons of fruit and vegetables every year and it's only because of the the inadequate supply chain practices all over the pakistan you know and who pays this price we pay the price we the consumer you know uh, i think the sarkar sahab uh, has got this huge experience handling these these products uh, in his personal capacity and he would definitely tell you maybe in next class that, that how much cost a farmer get price a farmer get for one product produce fresh produce and at, at what price a consumer you know uh, buy buy from the market there's a huge difference be between these two two like um, uh, two main milestone of the, of the uh, like food supply chain one the the farmer side and second is the consumer side so producer of course like um, uh, like um, uh, uh, like, uh, like uh, the the farm houses and of course the consumer side uh, moving forward the usa which we call the most advanced country and of course they have got a lot of resources just because of the inadequate or neglected supply chain processes you know or the the practices they waste 31.75 million tons of fruit every year you know so i was participating in one of the um, conference in chicago um, you know, like um, a few years ago and um, there um, one of the guy who is represent one of the biggest um, fruit like producer in, in the us he told me uh, that um, um, or like um, he he himself actually like you know waste they, they produce this um, uh, this apricot um, and peach in like in like, like in their farm by the way so he he only wasted his fresh produce you know uh, like uh, alone in his farm equal to the total production of for example one country like pakistan or maybe like uh, like bangladesh or maybe like afghanistan only one producer in usa uh, you know uh, waste this kind of uh, fresh produce in one year this is one example by the way so in even europe uh, you know uh, you know that uh, in in in, uh, in netherlands uh, who are who 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 is uh, the biggest by the way uh, the, the the producer of these tulips you know and they are they are they are the biggest supplier of tulips to the world by the way every day or every every month they they waste tulips in big quantity just because of the inefficient supply chain and also like um, the 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 unpredictable demand and also like um, the higher logistic cost uh, because the farmer cannot afford to transport 1 dollar worth produce in 2 dollar like um, logistic cost of course so he he like um, they thought, they think that it's better to waste it rather than incurring additional loss uh, from moving it from one point to another point by the way so this is one of the Uh, this this is just a very brief kind of uh, um, yeah, like um, uh, information when it comes to value chain losses 
um, across different supply chain in the world. I hope I'm not, not like uh, uh, very much detail by the way, one time somehow it's uh, 8 to 12, okay. So I could be quick. Anyway, so now we have to understand that, um, uh, so it's not like uh, you can see it in this picture. You can, being the supply chain guy, you cannot sit, relax. If it's one of the link in, in your supply uh, is sinking or losing money or, or, or practicing uh, bad processes, for example. So it is quite interlinked. And we all, we all, all the, all the link in this whole supply chain has to work efficiently. You cannot, you cannot be, you cannot sit back and relax, seeing the other partner, let's suppose losing money or like uh, uh, following bad practices, for example. So you have to step up and yeah, like uh, team up to improve their processes to bring them to your level. So. Being the manufacturing company, for example, if any any of you belong to that uh, uh, segment of supply chain, you have to step up, look at your suppliers, how they uh, they produce their goods, what kind of process they they follow, uh, are they organized, are they like um, do they have supply chain function within their company, for example. So you have to step up, and you have to go to their facility. Just visit their processes, visit their production line, because end of the day, if they do not produce well, you will be affected end of the day. So you have to be proactive. You have to list down the A class supplier, B class supplier, and C class supplier, and you have to work on slowly and gradually in the vendor development, the supplier development end of the day, so that your supply chain can be predictable, can be uh, can be like um, like um, uh, like uh, more strengthened, of course. Um, then, of course, if you start ignoring them, um, uh, like uh, the question of time. So, let me give you one example. I know it's an old example, but it's very relevant, by the way. And I think it's very relevant when it comes to the um, collaborative supply chain. By the way, it's a new concept. I think I'm sure you would know this concept, uh, the collaborative, which, which is called CPFR. Um, Talk about, like, for example, in mid 90s, uh, the Swedish car manufacturer Volvo found itself with the excessive stock of green cars. So, what they did, by the way, they asked their sales and marketing department to start selling those, those green cars. You know, so they, they told that, uh, and marketing in silos, they, 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 they design a very massive campaign, for example, without telling their, their production, for example. They, they did this massive marketing and supplier accepted that product somehow and the demand has increased. But marketing failed to transform the, or inform, like um, uh, transform this, this demand um, to their production team so that they start producing more cars. So there was a huge gap uh, you know, uh, between these two uh, these, these two departments, you know, resulting loss of uh, opportunity and of course loss of customer another day which means that even within the same company the department that is why we do this SNOP which is called sales and operational planning whereby all these stakeholders of the company sit together including marketing sales finance production logistics you know you can say warehousing or you know other department come even the senior management of the company Sit together, sign off uh, on one target, and of course, they all work in a synchronized way. This is very, very important. I think the role of SNOP is very important. I think SNOP concept itself is a very huge concept. I think I'm sure you would know, learn it in the days ahead, inshallah. So, actually, we talk about, I, I, I tried not to actually like um, take a lot of time. Um, uh, defining this efficient supply chain, but I, I actually, you know, uh, like, um, um, uh, like, uh, confine myself to the six main trends, uh, which can lead you to the cost-efficient supply chain altogether. Um, so, trend number one is demand planning. So, 
I'll talk about demand planning later stage. Pair number two is globalization, you know. Pair number three is increased competition and price pressures. Pair number four is outsourcing, you know, which is very important. Number five is shorter and more complex product life cycle, which is called PLC. I think we will talk about more in the, in the, in the coming slides about what PLC is all about. And the term number six is closer integration and collaboration with supplier. And I just mentioned in, in my previous slide that, of course, without collaborating with your tier one supplier and tier two supplier and tier three supplier, and also the customer and the consumer, uh, tier one consumer and tier two consumer and tier three, which is the end consumer. You know, so you have to be, you have to create a collaborative supply chain model within your organization somehow. So these six trends are very, very important uh, to understand to, to understand the cost efficient supply chain altogether. So um, talk about the uh, demand planning, you know. So um, as sources and um, capacities uh, for manufacturing um, have uh, increased, more companies, by the way, have moved away from focusing efforts on plant level production planning and are adopting more of a demand driven focus of trying to influence and manage the um, uh, demand more efficient, uh, efficiently, by the way. So it's no more a kind of, it's a more into a demand driven planning, by the way. So now you always go to your sales people to share the forecast. They have their forecast for this month, for this day, for this week, for this month, for this quarter, for this for this year, for example. So you you start the, uh, the 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 planning process from the demand, from the actual demand forecasted by the salespeople. You know, so how the consumer um, likely to behave your product. By the way, you start the process from that on uh, that point onward. You know, backward. By the way. So it's, it's more like demand-driven kind of uh, uh, planning, which ultimately, you know, like uh, a demand-focused approach uh, to planning can significantly improve um, uh, demand planning and management efforts and help overall cost and customer service efforts. So if we talk about the key surface area, so continuous improvement of the forecast accuracy, because sometimes I think we all understand it very well that uh, sales uh, in a lot of companies, um, uh, I'm not sure like somebody is from sales right now. I'm sure not. Um, uh, but not generally, uh, sales do, does, uh, do not give you um, like does not give you a kind of uh, good forecast. Um, we all say that in supply chain, the forecast is always wrong. But being supply chain profession, we always try to um, reduce the forecast errors and to increase, increase the forecast accuracy in, in, the, in the same way, by the way. So again, so we have to include, improve the accuracy of forecast by collaborating with the salespeople. Because if we let them know that, look, your one bad intubation, or your, your one bad decision, or your one bad data may result into higher uh, like in inventory carrying costs, for example. For example, uh, like if they if they and uh, if their accuracy, for example, is forty percent, which means sixty percent of the raw material keeps uh, keeps keeps lying in your raw material warehouse, or maybe sixty percent of your finished goods lying in the warehouse all over the country, for example, and it will increase the obsolescence. The product obsolescence or the expiry or the damages, which resulting in group, which, which is going to hit your bottom line massively, by the way. So, the second uh, success area, having all stakeholders, including sales, marketing, finance, product development, and supply chain, agree upon a consensus, normally being done in the SOP meetings and different uh, and demand plan, effectively, sales and operation planning process. Our demand planning success is often tied to organization infrastructure. I think we've discussed this concept already. And, um, and again, technology plays a very vital role, um, making sure that these departments link with technology, 
that is why we, we always see that at the role of um, like um, um, like um, uh, like um, uh, what do you call it uh, ERP um, is very important. I think Sheikh Saab has got huge experience developing this ERP. I think he did a couple of uh, it, it, like he developed a couple of ERP in his in, in like in his like um, past uh, organizations. So ERP plays very important role in linking these departments together to to create a kind of synergies uh, to achieve um, the, the the best demand planning and more accurate forecast. Um, moving so again the, the benefit of this efficient demand planning is better forecasting. Increase profitability, end of the day, lower inventory, and more customer retention. By the way, so these four areas are very, very important. Directly hit your um, like uh, supply chain efficiency overall. By the way, so remember these four four uh, significant takeaway um, of um, of um, very good demand planning um, altogether. <clears throat> so if we talk about this um, uh, this, this concept of uh, Globalization, for example, uh, the business landscape is rapidly becoming uh, more global nowadays, uh, largely uh, due to the improvement in communications. Globalization is dramatically impacting the way business is managed um, uh, and uh, transacted even on the most local levels. Um, um, uh, no area of a business is affected. Uh, more by the trend to our global uh, business uh, environment than the supply chain. So, so supply like uh, so again the, the the business environment plays very important role um, when it comes to the like um, like uh, the global um, uh, uh, like uh, uh, like uh, concept. For example, so the right supply chain design is critical uh, to managing the changes brought about by the rapid like globalization altogether. A well thought out supply chain network design can optimize the network and the flows of material through the network. You know, the concept of, I think it's a very basic concept of supply chain. You, you need to decide that which raw material is your primary raw material, for example. For example, if you are into this uh, textile business, so technically, you have to locate yourself close to the um, like um, uh, production facility, for example, the cotton uh, belt, for example. So that is why um, the government at, of that time planned to establish textile hub in Faisalabad because they thought that it's very close to the cotton producing belt in Pakistan, for example, in the in the um, uh, South Punjab area altogether to uh, up to Multan and then Faisalabad. So they decided to uh, to establish textile um, hub in Faisalabad, right? So I think uh, so. And again, so your, your factory location, your warehouse location is plays very important role when it comes to the designing the supply chain network of any company. So this is something a new, um, and of course it will help you to reduce the total landed cost of your raw material as well as your finished goods altogether. So if you talk about the strategic question answered by, by a well thought or network design, then of course, where should the facilities be located? Whether it's, whether it's production facility or the warehousing facility or any other facility uh, in the supply chain, by the way. How many facilities should I have and what capability should they have? That's very really important. You cannot, you cannot afford to have a big housing big housing facility whereby you, you only use it, let's suppose, 40%, which means the 60% of your space going to waste, of course, and you have to translate that wastage into the money term, in the dollar term, end of the day. That would, that would of course, give you a real picture somehow. So what kind of capacity should they have, right? And what products and services should they handle? What's very, very important. Whose manufacturing and distribution orbits should be sourced? And which contract packers, you know? So these, these uh, six or eight, you know, eight like uh, important questions you have to get answered 
uh, while designing the, the, the network, the supply chain network, because that would actually contribute a lot when it comes to like um, uh, when it comes to uh, cost of supply chain altogether. If you just move on um, further, you would find the trend number three, which is called the increased competition in price pressure. Um, like historically, uh, price, product, features, and brand recognition were enough to differentiate many products in the marketplace. You know, um, but the continued, like um, uh, in the commodity world, by the way, many products companies need better ways to distinguish themselves. Uh, in one case, a large global consumer goods manufacturer saw prices around same of its commodity products drop as much as 60 to 80 percent. For example, product innovation and the brand equity no longer were allowing them to command a higher price in the market. So again, that's very important. So first, they are looking at ways to reduce the cost and are creating um, a more efficient value chain um, to remain cost competitive because it's all market driven economy, the, the, the consumer driven economy. And consumer has got a lot of options right now. Um, for example, if Nokia is still, um, you know, uh, like had uh, uh, like uh, learned something many years ago, they would have not ended up losing a big market share. You know, so so market. So that's very important. You have to understand the consumer psychology, the consumer behavior, and generally, it's a price. It has become the price conscious market right now. You know. So, of course, so cost improvements and inventory management, logistics operations, material management, and manufacturing costs, including raw material and component acquisition, can be found with the same operating planning, transportation and distribution management, improved product life cycle management, and improved strategic sourcing and procurement. Uh, and suppliers can differentiate themselves um, in a number of ways as well as providing value, additional services and capabilities to the customer and differentiate factor could be um, VMI, which is called vendor managed inventory. Um, uh, it's a concept of um, like uh, managing inventory by the supplier at your warehouse. So whenever the supplier actually is it's like it works like the for example in case of metro or any modern trade store in the country or anywhere in the world like walmart um, like um, walls green uh, like any other uh, like um, modern trade store or even in your in your factory by the way in your factory store this supplier has got visibility into your inventory so you agree you agree, you sign up with your supplier that okay this is your reorder value, for example, or reorder quantity, for example. So supplier get to know the if the, that that um, the quantity of that particular particular SKU hit the reorder um, threshold, the supplier would automatically you know uh, ensure the supply of the the minimum order uh, value or quantity uh, like uh, supply. To the, to the location immediately. You don't have to order, you don't have to place the order because you, you sign up with your supplier that you have to manage the inventory of my warehouse, of my raw material warehouse, of my finished goods warehouse, of my retail store, for example. So vendor has got the visibility to that extent whereby they know the inventory of their customer. So this is called the VMI. It's a very complex concept, and we'll talk about it maybe later on. Through technology, which is called RFID, uh, I think um, Sheikh Saab, of course, has uh, explained you in his earlier classes. RFID, of course, is technology which helps you to take, uh, trace and uh, track and trace your your physical goods, you know, and of course, enable you to uh, to locate the um, to, to do the inventory count, the cycle counts, and to, uh, to to trace, to locate during the, throughout the 
production line, for example, and also the um, uh, the the uh, uh, till the time the consumer gets by the way. For example, I like um, uh, I also give let me give you one example. For example, I bought an uh, overcoat in Chicago from uh, from Messi store, and um, so it does it did not somehow you know. Uh, fit me properly, so I decided to return back to the store. But but by that time, I traveled to New York, you know, in few days time. So I went to the uh, like uh, Messi store in New York um, and and returned that product. And in just in one scan, they 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 would know it's that they they they, they actually knew that okay, this product has been sold in Chicago by this store at. This price, for example, and they took no time to run, run that money immediately to me. You know, this is the RFID can play a very vital role. Um, <clears throat> uh, value adding in the supply chain and also um, um, gaining more customer satisfaction. Uh, end of the day, of course, labeling and packaging, of course, like um, with collaboration, is very very important um, somehow. Um, moving forward, which is one of the topics which is very close to my heart, is my bread and butter, which is called outsourcing. And you know, and and, and you know, outsourcing is one of the concept um, which um, which should which is not much um, like uh, known in Pakistan or developing economy. But in the developed economy, um, they they seriously they have been they have been like uh, uh, practicing it. Uh, for many many years, for example, and they they fully agree with this concept uh, somehow, and they know their core competencies. So, as many companies step back and examine their core competencies, some realize that the outsourcing parts of all of supply chain can be advantages, um, and of course, um, which means that um, uh, you you always have expert people or expert, for example, segment of your supply chain, for example. Supply planning cannot be done any supply chain guy. You always have a specialized person who do supply chain planning. Demand planning cannot be done by logistics guy, for example. You have to have a supply demand planner uh, for that function of supply chain, for example. So, which means that core competency is the is the the important uh, concept, by the way, uh, within the organization. A finance segment cannot be handled by a logistics guy. A logistics segment cannot be handled by a warehousing guy, for example. A warehousing segment cannot be handled by, for example, sales guy. You know, so it means that we need expert. We we need specialized people. Then then generalized generous people, for example. So it's not about uh, uh, you know what do you call it English. Uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, 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 I don't know what uh, uh, master of none. I forgot the exact <laughs> exact exact word. By the way, jack of all master is none. So yeah, I think you 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 need to have a kind of specialized people to do this specialized job. For example, the so same our sourcing actually help manufacturing companies. Uh, to focus more and more on the core competency, which is the manufacturing, you know, and also help them to engage their resources more into this production, then engaging this energies and, and resources in logistics and warehousing, in other functions of supply chain, which can be outsourced very easily. You know, you know that a lot of companies in Pakistan have already outsourced HR function. Had all, as I have already outsourced finance function, for example, I have already outsourced social marketing, social media marketing, or logistics, or warehousing, or air transport, or sea transport, for example. So outsourcing is the concept where where you can, and, and of course, these companies being the specialized can of course bring in efficiency into supply chain. That, that's very. Very important, uh, like a trend, uh, which 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 would contribute, which has been contributing a lot when you talk about reducing this, the cost of supply chain altogether. Um, you know, like simply um, talk about the next, which is uh, 
again talk about this uh, uh, the, the 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 optimally outsourced supply chain either in its entirely or just component relies heavily on superior supply chain network design inclusion of that outsourced partner in the information chain um, establishment of control mechanism to proactively monitor the various components of supply chain and is to connect and coordinate supply chain as seamlessly as possible so the a failure to excel at any one of these components can result in breakdowns affecting the supply chain efficiency or this means that is very very important by the way this is something which is very important this is called product life cycle you know um in this in 60s or in i told you last time in 60s um um uh, like uh, the manufacturer com manufacturing companies of that time always focus on quality and the product itself they plan the product life cycle for next 30 years 20 years you have the example of nokia for example they introduced this 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 uh, amp set mobile set and they 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 kept on producing it without looking at the consumer behavior without looking at the the the, the market trend the competition um, current uh, like of that time they just they just stopped looking at those important areas because in their supply chain strategy the product the plc the product life cycle was more than the at least um you know uh, the time was uh, you know unrealistically planned by the way so they thought that um, uh, and they designed the price accordingly you know they thought they planned the production plan they they bought um, and on day one would fully depreciate maybe after 6 years time so they decided okay they they keep, they kept on producing the same product for next 6 years for example so you know every product has a life cycle and i have divided this life cycle into four segment it's a very famous by the way a chart is not been developed by me but of course it's a general chart of product life cycle it will start from introduction of the product and then it will start like uh, gaining the growth and then it test the maturity and then it start declining this is the consumer behavior comes in of course the consumer started looking at here and there for the substitute of that product so the, the demand started going down and at that point you have to introduce another product or different um like uh, let's suppose version of software or mobile phone or different model or different type or different variant to retain that customer attention at the maturity level so the the, the past the old version used actually avoided this this this, this whole process they thought that the product life cycle should be longer should be 6 year 5 years you know so this is the uh, this is the actually the error they have done uh, you know the, at that time resulting the the product obsolescence because they kept on they keep on uh, producing more the same kind of products you know it's a kind of the, the concept is called in production make to stock you know so they the whole production uh, like system work on the make to stock model so it's not demand driven kind of the model they 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 believe that they have to like um, keep on producing that particular product just to and they show that it it going to consume end of the day without looking at the consumer demand or consumer trend or consumer behavior resulting the product obsolescence resulting the wastages resulting the higher inventory carrying cost resulting the, uh, the 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 bad cash flow management and all the stuff so so we have to uh, we have to shorten the 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 the, uh, the plc of the 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 uh, product of our, of our times so so the ultimate goal of collaboration is to increase the visibility throughout the value chain in an effort to make better management decision and ultimately decrease value chain cost because if your sales or marketing gives you heads up you know before the next buying decision of of raw material that 
the product life cycle the consumer will stop or has stopped um, uh, like uh, buying that product so you would uh, through system you would know it on time and you can save your cash flow you can avoid making wrong orders to supplier and it's called actually the bull with effect you order one 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 like uh, supplier the supplies to your tier 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 three partner for example the tier three partner orders to tier two partner and the tier one partner end of the day so it may end up uh, into this bull with effect you know uh, uh, of course and it will affect all the partner in the supply chain badly which ultimately uh, end up increasing the cost of that material and of course inefficiency all the time so with the right tool of and processes of course an organizational structure in place collaboration provides key people throughout the value chain um, with the information needed uh, to make business critical decisions with the best available information on time that's very very important taking the right decision at right time that's the key in the supply chain i think you just put note it down somewhere take the right decision at the right time sometime in your supply chain career you end up taking the right decision at wrong time or maybe at the wrong decision at the right time so you end up losing money you end up losing efficiency you end up losing customer you know and maybe that you losing business in the day so in the end you would uh, i try to um, you know tell you the the potential and the challenges uh, of recent supply chain and uh, you know i'd list down all the uh, six or seven you know important segment of supply chain for example the it plays very important role in the demand driven supply chain the storage and deliveries um, the plan out of home external multi modal transport road and rail services and cna of course um man free operation automated environment where but robotics come and come in the picture uh, you know and talk about the drone delivery is to talk about the the or like uh, the asrs in the, in the warehousing concept um tpers um, um you know uh, like um, um, like um, the robotic machine energies and all the stuff and laser scanning rfid rfid scanner and, and, and this this technology world is endless um the globally connected operations from production side to the consumer via internet of iit you know and of course iot concept the data velocity concept comes into the picture right now and you start um, you start actually tapping the demand the consumer behavior uh, before the actually demand um, before the actual um, need transform into the actual demand you know to tap that that thing at that point i know that is why the the, the surveys and the the general interviews and you know the social media at the nmc these companies usually monitors also these areas the sustainable supply chain carbon um, uh, energy water wastage and efficient supply chain that's also very important by the way uh, because uh, that could give you a sustainable supply chain uh, like uh, system to so talk about the potential area so why i just try to uh, list down some of the uh, you know statistics with you uh, because it will help you to understand what the future of supply chain would be or by 2025 3 out of 5 people will live in the urban areas which mean the uh, the population of the urban areas would increase which means the challenges of delivering goods um, will be higher uh, the 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 consumption of that good demand will, will go ultimately higher which means you have to make your production facility in a like large enough to accommodate to accommodate that uh, the, that high demand you have to have a agile responsive cost effective supply line of your raw material and the finished goods so that you can tap the you can you can you can uh, you can gain the higher market share 
um, moving forward, the logistic expenditure will be doubled by 2025. You know, um, if you talk about uh, the delivery transaction daily, it would reach by in next five years 500 million order per day globally, which which will, which can tell you that. Uh, the how complex world would be when it, when it comes to the e-commerce or the marketplace supply chain. And look, you know, it's evolving in Pakistan. I was talking to one of my friends uh, who is into this cash on delivery segment of supply chain, which is called the last mile delivery. And it's a new startup. It's a startup, by the way, it's a new company. And they are now employed by this by today 250 riders so far only in Karachi who just take the customer order to their doorstep every day and they are now in process to hire 150 riders in next one month you can see them only one company it's a company not known to everybody it's an unknown company but they are into the COD business uh, recently, and they are they are employing around 250 riders so far. So the 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 the, the like uh, the total per day order volume would reach to 500 million orders per day. By the way, so the world trade in goods by next five years will be around 35 trillion. You know, which was 18.3 trillion in eight years back. By the way. So, I know I think this is a, this is a big jump, of course, and that would that would make our supply chain more complex. And we all, being supply chain professionals, have to be um, equipped. Have to be equipped with all the latest technology and latest concept, and geared up to meet these uh, like this this challenges. By the way, talk about the challenges. So, cost containment because, of course, the the, the price, the market has become the price conscious market right now. Um, it's three for eight forty nine. Okay. I'll wrap up in the next five minutes. Cheers up. Um, the cost containment, of course, that's very important. Um, which is ability to contain cost for affordable uh, prices. Um, uh, loss reduction can be major driver, of course. If you are able to uh, to reduce the wastage in your supply chain. You can only add a lot of value. You can increase your saving in the supply chain, which which hits your bottom line, of course, uh, like in a positive manner. By the way, so visibility is one of the area. Um, global ecological changes will drive your future supply chain. Will be structured, of course, and risk more complicated and interdependent supply chain will need more comprehensive mitigation plans, um, like um, beyond the boundary, of course. Um, different different contingency planning, so that would also of course like help you to um, like these are challenges. I think you you you, you yourself uh, recently seen this challenge right now when the Swiss Canal happened, uh, crisis happened, whereby you know like a lot of companies who actually ordered their their raw material um, face still facing delays, and of course resulting um, the delay in production, resulting delay in supplies. Resulting, uh, you know, like out of shelf condition situation, of course, resulting market uh, like um, like uh, uh, share loss. By the way, so these are challenges. I think we, I always call it, we are now transforming our supply chain from supply chain from just in time to just in case supply chain. You know, just in case if something happened, how we would uh, like um, respond to that challenge. If something happened, how if let's say a pandemic happened, of course, in the past year, we all have um, suffered badly. All the chain guys, you know, we have no air traffic, no sea traffic, no road traffic, you know. So, and of course, despite all these challenges, we somehow ended up, uh, of course, market losses, market share losses, of course, higher production costs, higher logistics costs, of course, uh, scarcity of the supplies of the goods, raw material. So of course we have to think in a just in case supply chain, whereby we should all the time to uh, work on the on the 
on the uh, potential risk and the plan to mitigate that risk to make sure that the supply chain remains resilient okay and sustainable at the same time so the resilient remember these two words res resilience and sustainable so these two words are very very important when it comes to the future supply chain uh, all together so um, so end of the day so cost efficiency uh, must be improved by of course reducing inventory costs and of course minimizing the um, labor expenses and decrease logistical costs to achieve uh, financial success of course end of the day so i think um, um, I think I think we have covered a lot of topics, uh, uh, especially in terms of uh, um, the, the supply chain efficiency. And I think um, Sheikh Sab, if you want, you, you can take question if you want. I think it's already. I have uh, I think a lot of uh, comments here, which um, I think uh, let me go through. Yeah. So anyway, Sheikh Sab, over to you. Because I have taken a lot of time, I think I'm also going to have to buy something for my house, so I have to leave my office uh, for my home. So can we have questions maybe in the second stage, or maybe you just take all these questions, send it to me, and I'll respond to you on email. Is it okay, Sheikh Sir? Sir, can you sir uh, answer few questions? Just uh, who, the few students have written on the comments that okay. some uh, factors for planning and uh, forecasting demand okay and perfect so, so let me take one question i think uh, dan fahim rana asked this question can we help improve the company's cost efficiency through the long term supply of course yes fahim um, you know uh, sometimes if you take a buying decision based on uh, but of course you cannot take this risk for example um, you have to make uh, uh, categories in your like uh, in your uh, raw material for example whereby you cannot adopt this strategy for every of your raw material all together so you have to be you have to do pick and choose kind of thing you know so you, maybe you can afford to uh, give a kind of uh, uh, go for a long term supplier um, like agreements uh, by taking leverage on the cost for example uh, in one component of your supply, like of your uh, finished goods, uh, but, but of course you cannot uh, uh, like um, uh, define the same kind of strategy for all your component. So you have to be like um, um, very smart to take uh, such long term decision. But I totally agree with you. Um, instead of uh, uh, like giving a kind of sense of insecurity to supplier, you better just uh, you know. Uh, walk into your supplier premises and um, uh, like um, uh, go to him and talk to him like uh, okay fine look I want to give you a long term for example contract provided you give me uh, assurance that you will keep on supplying this goods throughout this time you will maintain the inventory you will maintain the quality of that raw material all the time you would ensure me that you will keep on improving in the quality every day for example and you will keep on meeting my price expectation we are ready to sign off with you for next 10 years for example I'm, i totally agree with you it's one of the tools whereby you can get leverage on the price as well as you can reduce the number of suppliers in your supply chain which ultimately uh, i think um, uh, like um, help you to achieve the uh, the sustainable kind of or more like predictable supply chain altogether. I hope I answer your question, uh, Payne. Uh, moving forward, um, yeah, Mariam Tarek, very, very interesting. It's, it's called Blue Economy. Uh, what is the impact of Blue Economy on the Pakistan supply chain? Um, look, fortunately, if you look at our geography, you know, like, uh, so we are. That is why I always um, uh, like I demand on uh, Pakistan is my part of my demand by the way. So uh, you know, so I, I I believe being a supply chain guy that Pakistan, if if we of course um, uh, good and leadership and of course um, uh, like uh, and of course the people of Pakistan um, would would uh, like uh, will be behave responsibly. We are very well located and we can get. 
are huge advantage of this blue economy. Um, you know this uh, the concept of um, Obor, the one belt, one route, uh, one road of Chinese, by the way. What is this? It's all about linking the world with each other uh, to, re to reduce the um, like dependency on one or two links, by the way. You know, so, so the, the, the concept of blue economy is all about, you know, um, making your, your uh, you know, using the, the, the waterways efficiently, using the, you know, like, um, like um, uh, the resources available globally efficiently uh, to ease out uh, the, the, the cost of doing business altogether. Not only the developer, but also in developing world. So yeah, see, it's a big concept, by the way, and uh, we'll discuss it some maybe sometime later. I think. Let's let's um, let's keep it uh, for now. Um, second, uh, Danish Khan, as you have mentioned, agile planning of raw material. Please also suggest how can we create planning of import-based material which take 45 or 60 days to be delivered at the facility. How can we plan such inventory? Yeah, I think. Uh, you know that is why if you if you just look at the let's let me answer you differently. You know I have not tried to suggest you the solution of, of your problem, but let me suggest you let me answer this question differently uh, in a global perspective. For example, you know um, um, uh, due to this geopolitical situation in the world, by the way, lot of companies are actually have relocated are still thinking to relocate their production facility close to the raw material um, and like uh, the, 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 the sourcing the sourcing location by the way because they think that because of this only chinese new year you know every company operating from china has to order a lot of raw material 60 days ahead from their actual need by the way, which means because if they order just in time, they won't be able to get these goods on time to the factory, of course. So, of course, the congestion is there in the ports, in different ports of China. So now the Chinese, that is why they have created this overall concept just to ease out the pressure on the Chinese port, especially during these holiday season and of course different um, like um, different like uh, um, uh, seasonality or um, uh, what do you call it uh, Christmas season and all the stuff. So they are now thinking to relocate their factories from China to Vietnam to Laos to Pakistan to Sri Lanka and you know uh, in the in the CPAC group uh, we have over nine exclusive economic zones across the country. You know. So, and these all economic zones actually being offered to all these companies working in China, as well as the, 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 the foreign companies out of China to come up and establish their manufacturing plant in Pakistan. If they want to produce textile, we have cotton. If they want to produce, let's go into this dairy manufacturing, we have milk available. If they want to come into this specialty business or fresh produce, we have a huge uh, harvest, uh, the most um, you know yield given uh, land available, agricultural land available in, pa in Pakistan or anywhere in the world. So, just to answer the question, relocation of factory location could be the um, answer of this question. But of course, in Pakistan scenario whereby we are heavily depending on the uh, import uh, import raw material, and for that thing, I think. Um, 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 I think um, um, you have to, uh, you have to it's an upward risk to supply chain, by the way. Uh, so you have to you have to make your contingency planning. I totally agree with you. Um, uh, even even uh, with this kind of lead time, it is very difficult to manage your cash flow and your supply chain because you have to order the goods before 60 days from the actual list of that uh, like raw material in the factory. So I think it's a very complex situation, of course, like I think, but it will it will take some time. And I think you have to develop internal and the local vendor also. For example, uh, when, when I say, when I said earlier 
that you have to work on the vendor development, which means that you have to look for alternative sourcing. For example, maybe uh, you you kept on ordering one product from from one country in Europe, but you should work on the alternative sourcing. For example, you can get it from Iran also, or they come from from um, uh, like from China or maybe from any other part of the world. So you should, you should also work on our ordinary sourcing of that particular raw material somehow. So I think maybe I would be able I, I, I am able to answer the question. But if not, then just just let Zulfikar uh, Sab know, and I would respond to you in detail, maybe differently. Um, any other question? Okay, Danish Khan again. So I'm not answering this question because the same guy asking different questions. So I'm just trying to. Okay. So Sheikh Saab, I think it's, let's call it a day now. Uh, so thank you very much, all of you attending this webinar. Uh, thank you, Zebes. Thank you, uh, Zulfakar Saab, for organizing it. And um, I'm sure like um, uh, you would, uh, and all your students, I think, learn a lot uh, uh, through my slide and through my, I think, um, talk. And I look forward to meeting you again um, in days and days ahead, of course. So from my side, it's it's all done. Um, so thank you very much, all of you, and Ramazan Kareem to all of you, and remember me in your prayers. Sheikh Saab, over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time, effort, and a lot of inconvenience due to uh, rescheduling of class twice. So sorry for that. Really appreciate, sir, your effort and this informative and beneficial for me also and for uh, students because they've learned a lot of uh, information from you. They will uh, use that information in their professional life. Hope, hope to say that, inshallah. Inshallah, sir. Thank you very much, Sheikh Saab. Thank you very much, all of you, and of course, Yabis. Whoever listening me or watching me right now. Thank you very much. All the best. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank Allah you. Allah. Class, now you can uh, move to class. We can continue.